capture a few uh, uh, issues around uh, lumbosacral pelvic fracture itself. So sacral fractures can result from a range of uh, injury mechanisms, usually as in any injury or bony injury, uh, which involves the, the spine or the, or the pelvis. It's a result of a high energy in the young, and usually low energy only causes fractures with uh, patients who are elderly or have insufficiency fractures or osteoporosis. The pattern, the uh, location, stability of the fracture also varies greatly according to the uh, mechanism of injury and also the type of impact. Uh, most of the fractures are stable, non displaced, and usually treated conservatively, while significantly displaced fractures require reduction and internal fixation. So, is it a spine or a pelvic injury? Sacral fractures uh, uh, occur approximately in 45% of all pelvic fractures. Uh, the pattern of the associated pelvic fractures has a significant impact on the location of the stability and the treatment of the sacral fractures. The sacral fracture associated with the lateral compression pelvic fractures usually are stable, and since there is an impaction of the, of the sacrum, so it's actually involved. In contrast, sacral fractures associated with the vertical shear of the pelvis uh, are usually unstable patterns. Sacral fractures may involve injury to the lumbosacral junction, which uh, holds the, the, the more unstable uh, injuries, which involve both the pelvis and the spine and the junction in between. As we said, the close association of the lumbosacral plexus uh, uh, hold the neurological structures at risk, uh, especially in high energy fractures. Neurological injury associated with sacral fractures can range from an incomplete injury to a single nerve root involvement or uh, the entire cord equina. We'll talk about that uh, in more detail. As you can see, the uh, proximity of the, of, the, of the sacral plexus and uh, it could be affected by these patterns of injury. When we talk about classification, we have different types of classification. Some of them are descriptive, some of them are uh, according to the uh, treatment plan. When we talk about classification, first comes into mind is the Denis classification, where it shows the zones of injury. Zone one is lateral to the foramina, uh, two is involving the, uh, the foramina, and three is medial to the foramina or involving the canal. More descriptive classifications, uh, uh, were uh, introduced, uh, and these usually involve uh, more transverse or complex patterns, and they usually uh, are classified at the, as Denis, uh, Denis type three fractures, but they have a more uh, complex or uh, descriptive classification. As you can see, it could be an H-shaped uh, or U-shaped or lambda or even a T-shaped fracture, and all these hold different uh, types of uh, or uh, uh, status of uh, instability and different modalities of treatment. Uh, Roy Camille had a classification involving the, the sagittal instability of the, of the sacrum, which is more directed towards the uh, sagittal spine stability, and it has four types. Uh, the first type is only a, a simple flexion type of injury. Second type involves flexion and uh, minor displacement. Third involves uh, complete displacement, and the fourth uh, involves the comminution of the S1 body. And this also dictates the type of, of fixation or treatment that uh, we can use. <coughs> Isler classified uh, based on the location of the major fracture relative to the L5 S1 facet, which is a major stabilizer when it comes to the junction between the spine and the pelvis. As you can see, type one uh, fractures uh, go lateral to the, to the facet, uh, and this is um, uh, stable when it comes to the uh, spine uh, or the spinal stability, but there is a vertical shear which involves the pelvis. It means it's, it's uh, unstable when it comes to the pelvis. And as it goes to type uh, two through the, the facet and then type three immediately to the facet, uh, the more instability that happens. And, and if you have a transverse or a fracture going through or a chance type fracture going through L5, and that's uh, really highly unstable. Of course, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a part of the spine, and you have some nerve roots, uh, so neurological injury uh, could happen, and it's up to 25% of the cases, although you have a wide canal and wide foramina, uh, this, the, these uh, injuries may happen, and they can range uh, from neuropraxia to complete uh, root avulsion or, or transaction or, or even cord equina. 
uh, it's not really uncommon to miss some of those injuries, especially in the lower sacral uh, roots. That's why uh, sphincter uh, examination and thorough neurological examination should be uh, 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 a routine. Light touch pinprick sensation should be assessed, perineal dermatomes, in addition to uh, perineal wink, bulbocavernous and cremastic reflexes should be assessed. And I really uh, uh, stress on my juniors whenever they examine patients uh, to really thoroughly examine uh, these uh, patients neurologically. The treatment of the sacral fractures, as we said, it depends on the, on the stability and the pattern. Most sacral fractures are benign and they are treated conservatively, and these include uh, non-displaced, uh, stable, without significant associated pelvic ring disruption, and fractures not involving the lumbar sacral junction, and patients without any neurological uh, compromise. Usually, these patients, we allow them uh, full weight, uh, weight bearing limited to touch, uh, sorry, starting with touch weight bearing, and on the affected side uh, uh, for approximately eight weeks. And then we ask the patients to progressively uh, bear weight till they reach the full uh, weight bearing status. How about operative treatment? Usually the goals for operative treatment are two. Uh, it's uh, neurological decompression and uh, realignment and stabilization. Neurological deficit suggests the need for immediate surgical decompression as in any uh, type of injury. Uh, neurovascular status does dictate that. Although decompression within two weeks uh, of injury appears to be acceptable time frame, but it also depends on the type of uh, neurological deficit. As you can see here, uh, it shows that there's a, a fracture through the, through the sacrum and there is an incarcerated uh, uh, cortical fragment in, in the foramen. After that, uh, close reduction and percutaneous uh, fixation. Realignment was, uh, uh, looks really acceptable, but the patient still is co complaining of uh, neurological deficit. So you can always go in and also do a, a decompression uh, after that, and the patient did regain their uh, neurological status. Severe angulation of the transverse sacral fracture in some of the cases, although they may not have a neurological deficit, but they may uh, cause some uh, tenting of the skin. And because of that area, it is really uh, prone to skin breakdown. And especially in really uh, thin patients, even post-traumatic patients which go into catabolic states and uh, cachexia, we've seen this a lot. Uh, they, they may develop very bad uh, sores around that area and then it becomes a nightmare. That's why we always like to go in as a percutaneous fixation and uh, percutaneous iliosacral screws uh, are very popular, especially among uh, trauma surgeons. Uh, but when it comes to sacral fractures, the trajectory of the screw is a little bit different. It's more horizontal. And uh, if, if the fracture was comminuted, we need to use a fully threaded screw in order to uh, minimize the uh, over tightening or overlap and uh, uh, that may compromise the uh, nerve root. Uh, this is an example. As you can see, there was a, a comminuted fracture and a fully threaded screw was, was used there as a position screw or as a scaffold just to prevent the uh, comp uh, neural compromise. Uh, like other methods, posterior pelvic uh, ring stabilization, percutaneous elect screws uh, carry some disadvantages. The problem is it's not stable in all, all planes. So in the sagittal plane, you still can have some angular deformity because it does rotate uh, around the axis of the screw. Uh, that's why we need to find uh, other methods. The other thing is that uh, uh, SI screws do depend on the, uh, on the lateral iliac cortex and also on the uh, S1 uh, vertebral body, so if you have any comminution or any, co any, any compromise in those factors, pull out uh, uh, is really uh, high in some of these cases. That's why we need to carry out some other modalities. Uh, posterior sacral tension band uh, developed in some uh, uh, entities uh, where we cannot put an SI screw, and sometimes you don't have a spine surgeon available. So it's a posterior tension band that does uh, 
close up the gap or bridges the, the, the sacrum. But the problem with these cases is that uh, it does involve a high degree of, of, of uh, soft tissue dissection. And if you're doing these kinds, uh, kind of cases, you know that uh, it's really uh, prone to uh, infection and wound dehiscence uh, and other complications. That's why uh, some people prefer lumbar pelvic fixation in, in, in some of these cases, especially the severe comminuted ones with uh, severe instability, uh, such as in the Eisler uh, 3, uh, three uh, H and U shape type. Uh, while Nork uh, reported, and these are some of the, uh, some of the literature that uh, uh, endorse this type of, uh, of fixation, uh, it does show a high degree of success uh, and a degree of correction, and that's where you can, you can also correct the, uh, the sagittal balance of the, of, the, of, of the spine. Most people usually go uh, through the midline, and you incorporate it with the... Uh, uh, with the incision with the uh, lumbar spine. Some do separate incisions, but whatever procedure you do, uh, usually uh, they do achieve uh, the goal. As you can see here, it's a really stable fixation that uh, uh, allows the patient to uh, even weight bear even earlier. But the problem is that sometimes uh, you need more stability and in all planes, that why, that's why the triangular osteosynthesis was introduced is that uh, as long as we're putting an SI screw and it's not enough and we're putting iliolumbar fixation, why not combine both? So we'll have this triangular type of osteosynthesis synthesis, which does uh, biomechanically uh, stabilizes more and you can even allow the patient to weight bear uh, much, much earlier, as it was uh, promoted by uh, Sagi and other uh, 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 surgeons. They only had a 5% of, of malunion, but of course with uh, iliolumbar fixation, you're, you're always having the, 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 uh, the problem of prominent hardware, uh, but now with the new implants, the low profile, uh, this problem is getting maybe uh, much less. Neural decompression. Uh, we'll just talk uh, briefly about this. Uh, maybe achieved indirectly by fracture reduction or directly by laminectomy or foramenotomy. However, indications for uh, outcome for neural decompression of injured sacral nerves remain a topic of debate uh, everywhere. In general, 80% in general uh, uh, of initial nerve injuries will recover regardless of what you, you do to them. Uh, as we said, it's a spectrum from neuropraxia or traction to uh, coda equina or avulsion, uh, but although the avulsion and the transaction is much rare, uh, the outcomes are much worse when it comes to that entity. I'll uh, just talk about a few uh, pearls. Post-void residual, very helpful in follow-up, important to document perianal function and uh, examination. Uh, in order to uh, detect lower, lower sacral uh, neurological compromise. Uh, some people use inter, uh, interoperative monitoring, which is uh, maybe a, a good tool uh, in some of these uh, cases. Uh, if you're doing SI screws or you're doing these uh, percutaneous screws, you need to have uh, good uh, imaging interoperatively, and please don't compromise because the imaging is most of the procedure. Uh, not every sacral decompression procedure requires a full sacral laminectomy or formonotomy, just a simple decompression, uh, maybe uh, advocate. A straight midline incisions, watertight facial closure, subcutaneous drain, horizontal nylon skin closure uh, is recommended, membrane dressing, and to avoid contamination because the uh, high uh, complication uh, rates in wood dehiscence and uh, infection. And we need to, unfortunately, keep the patient in a prone or a lateral position most of the time, or we need to put uh, the patient on uh, some uh, special air mattresses. Uh, fracture dislocation in this region could be also critical blood loss, and subcutaneous nature of the sacrum exposes any surgical approach in this region to complications, as we said. Pitfalls, loss of sacral root function is frequently irreversible. If it's uh, complete in a delayed discovery setting, the usual cause is loss of fracture reduction and impingement of the sacral canal. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much, uh, Dr.